Our next keynoter is uh, Fred Zimmerman, who is a director of CPE for VoIP Solutions, Communications, Infrastructure, and Voice Business at Texas Instruments. Please join me in welcoming him to the stage. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, how many of you are planning to go to lunch at noon? Uh, we're running a little late. I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. I have about 25 minutes. So lunch goes till 12.45, so you'll, you should be fine. Um, I'm going to spend my, my time talking today really around the challenges in achieving um, success in the SMB market, um, really a call to action to IP phone vendors, device, uh, device vendors, and just overall VOIP solution providers. Um, there are lots of challenges that has to be addressed, but we really have to have to, um, to increase the focus as an industry to really penetrate. I talked at this conference two years ago, and I kind of had a broader message, which was really driving how do we drive uh, VOIP into the broad market from the infrastructure through the enterprise and all the way down into the to the residential endpoints. Um, we've done a lot of, of good things over the last several years and we've had a lot of success. But the key, the key messages that we were echoing were you must meet the, the fundamental re, uh, quality and feature requirements of traditional systems. You must have quality of service. Um, you must provide advanced features that, that really make the customers want to, to utilize uh, the new systems that are coming out and, 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 and provide a really a very good selling message around that. All those really apply to the SMB, um, and at the same time, they're a lot more complicated because the SMB market's much more diverse. Now, just as a point of reference for, for t those of you, um, Texas Instruments is, is a leading provider of VOIP solutions into the industry. Um, we develop silicon processing technology, um, DSPs, uh, systems on a chip solutions, along with uh, developing the, the fundamental voice uh, firmware that really drives voice and video engines today that are in the majority of the VOIP equipment. Um, to date, uh, over the last 14 years, TI has shipped over 750 million ports of VoIP into uh, the VOIP space. So as a leading provider of um, IP phone, uh, voice engines to the IP phone market. Um, we're right in the thick of things and we're trying to really address the challenges that we're seeing uh, in the SMB space. The SMB space is getting a lot of, of market attention, a lot of press attention. Um, you know, predictions of very rapid adoption, uh, strong growth rates really abound out there. Um, even what is an SMB can be under question depending on who you talk to, anywhere from a thousand channels 500 channels all the way down to 10 channels. Um, for the purpose of this talk, I'm really focusing more on 100 channel installations and less, maybe maybe 1 to 200, 300 in certain cases, but primarily focusing on, on the, smaller, the smaller area. Uh, the IP phone market in total, it's a diverse market that's really, it's highly segmented, three main sections, enterprise, uh, residential and SMB. 2008 combined market, we're expecting the TAM shipments to be somewhere around 15 million phones. The vast majority of these will go into enterprise. Um, enterprise is the leading segment today with strong growth rates moving forward. Um, it's, it's a very, I don't want to like this word, but it's, very, it's a very homogenous type of market segment. The feature sets and challenges are, are established and well known. Um, deployments of systems into these spaces are well managed and they're phased um, primarily through IT groups. Um, one point to note is that the majority of the phones and systems that are going into the enterprise space are all shipping on proprietary PBXs with proprietary signaling. Phones today tend to be very simple in functionality, um, but we are starting to see that change as we move forward. Um, the industry has done a good job here of of really penetrating this market for 2007 was the first year that actually more IP phones shipped into the enterprise space than 
traditional digital and analog phones. So that's, that's a good success point. On the residential side, uh, residential VOIP today is really enabled through companies like Vonage or, or DSL IEDs or cable EMTA type of applications where um, the VOIP portion is really done inside the gateway or that IED and POTS phones or DEX phones are hooked up to those systems and that's really where, that's how the voice is derived. The phones are very simple. Um, things like call waiting, caller ID are the primary mechanisms. So when you turn to look at SMB, it's, it's a much different animal. Um, it's, it's a very large, um, diverse uh, set of opportunities, um, big, big opportunities, small opportunities. SIP is something that's the primary uh, communication method that will be deployed into these markets. Um, in 2008, it will be about 15% of the total market. But looking forward, the growth rate projections for SMB are the highest of any of these segments and is really where we're all going to spend a lot of time uh, trying to address moving forward. Of the, the $1.3 trillion that are going to be spent, were spent in 2007 on IT, about 35% was focused on this smaller, you know, 100 or less um, SMB segment, and that's going to continue to grow to over 40% in the next several years. Um, when you look at the SMB space, it's, it's huge, it's diverse. There's over 35 million SMBs in the world today. Worldwide, That's an awful lot of opportunities, an awful lot of customers. When you multiply that by the number of potential users, TAMs for phones, TAMs for systems are very huge. You know, over 500,000 new SMB businesses are created in the U.S. alone every year. Um, and really the question I have and that we're starting to really see as a challenge is how are we going to aggressively drive VOIP adoption rates into this market? So today... The typical equipment uh, replacement rate in SMB is somewhere every 7 to 12 years, maybe every 15 years. Equipment gets old, they go out and buy new equipment. And if, if all that happens is, is when an SMB's equipment's outdated, they go out to buy a new, a new equipment, now instead of just analog and digital, now there's a, some VOIP system that they can also buy. Um, and hopefully they'll buy the VOIP system, don't get me wrong, I want that. Um, and there's a lot of challenges around that choice. But fundamentally, all we've done with voice is just replace digital, right? And that's not really the key to success. We have to find a way through, through, through meeting all the requirements to, to make VOIP systems competitive in this space, to add features and functionality that really make it so that these SMBs want to break their traditional cycles and do early adoption, more aggressive adoption of VOIP. The landscape is very different from enterprise in the SMB. Um, uh, geographically, it's physical environments where people work can be wildly different, from offices to warehouses to, to homes to um, you know, car shops, things like this. Lots of different challenges there. Um, the IT departments that you traditionally have been working with on the enterprise side, they don't exist in SMB. The technical know-how may be much more limited. Um, there tends to be less structure in a lot of these SMBs. Idiosyncrasies of the owner. Um, employees tend to have a high turnover rate. Uh, that causes training problems. You may have part-time workers, shift workers, um, um, things like that. Another challenge that we've seen is a lot of the... Um, a lot of the workers in these uh, SMBs don't have access to PCs. They need to rely more and more on the phone. Um, VYP today really has benefits that we can offer into this space, and it is something that can be compelling if we can really uh, put it all together right and address all the key careabouts that, that we're talking about today. Um, SMBs fundamentally know that to compete and grow, they're going to have to, they'll eventually have to compete with uh, competitors at, at an enterprise type of scale. Um, so SMBs really want the capability to look and act like, like enterprises and, and act on that scale. Um, advanced features that we can offer with VOIP, like find me, follow me, and call routing, uh, interactive voice recognition are really things that can lend professionalism and image to these SMBs, um, can really in increase their, their sense of stability and really improve the perception of, of this, 
this organization. And really in the SMB space, perception is everything. Things like enhanced produ productivity, better customer service, um, the real cost savings they derive are also really key. But I think that right now today, um, the, being able to have the perception that this small SMB is a larger company with larger capabilities that can do customer service and build confidence in their customers is really what's driving them. And the, other, the other key piece is with VOIP, you really are opening up the regional boundaries to where an SMB can compete. You're making them be able to compete more outside a regional level but to a national level and maybe even beyond. <clears throat> to make all this happen, um, this is a very diverse market and cookie cutter solutions, which are what you know, we tend to see coming out today, um, really aren't going to cut it. A lot of key people, a lot of key organizations within this overall VOIP food chain are really gonna have to come together to field a robust and, and custom solutions to S individual SMBs or individual sub-segments of the SMB market. This includes the technology providers, the equipment makers, third parties, soft switch vendors, uh, systems integrators, which today now are becoming VARs, um, they're all going to have to come together um, operating with SIP and having interops and making sure everything all works and plays well together. Um, quality of service is a must. Digital PBXs have been around for 40 years. They have the features and functionality that these SMBs, even esoteric or boutique SMBs really want and need. And the VOIP industry has really been focused on fulfilling the feature sets for enterprise and residential and infrastructure. And we're just now over probably the last two years starting to focus on what are the needs and wants in the SMB space. We have to meet that bar of the traditional legacy PBXs. And at the same time, we have to provide quality, um, the tools to help the service providers and the people that are out there uh, implementing this service, giving them the tools to really troubleshoot and, and provide very good quality. And then, as always, there are things we can do with VOIP, things like, like wideband voice or um, some of the advanced user features that you can't do with digital PBXs. And we have to seamlessly integrate those and use those as a value proposition to really drive uh, penetration into the SMB space. I wanted to, to, to take a couple minutes. We, we've been talking not just to our traditional customers, which are IP phone vendors, PBX vendors, uh, ODMs, things like that. We've been talking to uh, companies that are out there actually trying to implement VOIP out there in the space. This is the, these are the people that are really where, where VOIP service in the SMB, this is where the rubber is trying to meet the road. We're trying to do successful implementations. And we have seen a number of success stories out there, and I wanted to talk about one, a company called ADP IP Network Services. So I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes talking about, about what they've been able to do and some of the challenges that they've seen, and it kind of ties into this overall message. So ADP traditionally focuses on car dealerships, and they, really, they have dealer management data systems and databases, customer relations management systems and databases, and what they've decided to do was to integrate VOIP telephony services into, into this organization, into the products they sell. Uh, they actually had to create a separate subsidiary called ADP IP Network Services because of, uh, of you know, the tax rates with telephony type of uh, charges. They didn't want to have to pay those taxes and tolls on things like the data services and not the, not the telephony. So created the separate network. It was created in May. 2007, so they've been around for about one and a half years. Um, this is the fastest selling, selling product in ADP history. Um, it's generating recurring revenue streams, which is something very attractive to this SMB. Um, initially, they were focused on bringing this service to, to dealerships that had uh, one to 200 and now 300 uh, phones or less. And they're starting to get real interest from national national change as well, so they haven't done any of those installs, but they're talking about that. And that kind of lines up with, as you develop custom solutions, uh, you, it, you, you can use those and you can scale those beyond your initial focus uh, and to bring in more business and really to help you grow, not only regionally, but nationally. Um, customers are finding benefits from this as well, uh, but before I get to that, 
ADP hosted services, they did a lot of work. They wrote all of their own applications to integrate the telephony system into their management systems. They wrote all the apps. Um, even simple applications like corporate directory structures, they wrote their own, even though every system they buy comes with one, but not one of them met the quality requirements to, to beat the installed legacy PBXs. So that's just kind of one of those points that shows, you know, more focus has to happen on, on these types of things. They've actually written applications on the phone, so you, the phones are directly talking into these database systems without PCs and things like that. And I'll talk briefly about those. Here's a uh, uh, kind of a network schematic. Today they provide uh, dedicated broadband access to every one of their customers. This is a, uh, a Q enabled, a QoS enabled broadband access. Right now it's specified it has to be a T1 to ensure quality. Hopefully moving forward we can, they can reduce that. But right now with the challenges they're seeing, the T1 is it. Um, they have their own ADP hosting center here in the center. Um, uh, the broadband they provide in con the T1 they provide in conjunction with a major service provider. Uh, their hosted services center their own application server, their own media gateway, their own um, uh, session border controller, their own soft switch, um, and all of the calls are routed through this hosting center. You know, the, the customer requirements that they're, that they're really trying to focus on are, you know, it's the ones we've all heard about, uh, cost-effective, easy-to-use solutions. They want the integration of the data and the voice phones together. Um, they want advanced features to, to, to enhance productivity, very big on things like soft keys because apparently in SMBs, you know, two key sequences like seven, six pounds, things like that are very hard to remember and hard to use. So they want um, more simplified features. Um, and then there is pressure on the cost of this T1, and, 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 and that's got to be resolved moving forward, I think. Um, a couple examples here. As a call comes in, um, caller ID is pulled, and a data dip is done into the database management system to figure out what the customer information is. If it's a new customer, um, sales histories, their interests, call histories, reminders, all kinds of things pop up on the screen, and, and the operator has those to to work with the customer. If it's a new customer, then the system pulls a reverse lookup, pulls up information on the customer, and uh, this is actually on the phone. Um, the salesperson actually has the, the ability to log this person into the customer relations management system as a, as a potential lead moving forward. Um, several other types of applications that, they, that they're using here that are, where they show the integration of the data and the, um, the telephony. When the car pulls into the service station, a camera takes a picture of the license plates. Uh, that's translated into a data dip lookup. The service appointment and all the information comes up on the screens. And um, as the service is logged and completed, IVR calls are set up uh, to automatically call the customer, tell them it's done, tell them what time they can pick it up, how much it costs. A follow-up calls are set up, many different things like that. And there's, there's a large number of other applications that they've managed to integrate into the system. And um, the, so they've been very successful. It's good to say today they have a very large backlog of customers, and they're pretty, um, they're pretty happy about that, but they're also challenged with it. Um, this, has been, this year and a half has been very successful for ADP, but it's also been a long road. They've gone through a lot of challenges in implementing these systems on issues everywhere from the endpoints into the gateways, into the soft switch, into the networks. Things like, um, you know, the basic phones don't ha did not have, at least initially, and, and some of the infrastructure capability couldn't do call park and call queuing and things like this, which are basic one-on-one -on -one features for, for these digital PBXs and the SMB applications, that the things that they must have. Uh, they had challenges with echo throughout the system. They've had challenges with clicks and pops and, and, and things like that. They had troubles with SIP signaling around 729 implementations. And a lot of these things took time, and they don't have the tools across the network to quickly uh, do diagnostics and troubleshooting. Um, and that's one of the things that really has to happen that we have to solve moving forward. Uh, but the good news is it's a growing company, and they have lots of 
They have customers and they have lots of backlog. So this is really a success story overall, and it just highlights that VOIP can be successful and we all can do a better job in the food chain of providing better solutions and, and working with companies like ADP who are trying to implement and really take the VOIP to market. Um, and just for food for thought, with all of the success that ADP has had, all the new functionality that they've done, and, and all the bells and whistles and things that the GM could really tout and talk about, when we asked them for a quote, this is what we got. And basically what this says is, hey TI, hey industry, VOIP phones have to work as good as the phones we're trying to replace. And this is 2008, and we still aren't meeting that. And that's a fundamental problem, and that's really a call to action. And I just think it's very interesting that this is the quote he gave us. So food for thought. Um, quality is a, is a very big deal here. Uh, it's essentially going to be it is table stakes on the SMB side. Um, IP is mature. It's non-deterministic. Um, service providers are having trouble with quality. The top three quality issues today seen by service providers are one is audio, audio issues. And these are really things related to clicks, pops, robotic voice. Um, and these are network issues. These are packet loss, jitter issues, types of things, delay, things like that um, that are out there in the network. The second biggest problem is still echo. And echo happens whenever a call goes off net onto the PSTN or from the PSTN back onto net. Um, and the third one is really issues around signaling, call drops, uh, no connects, things like one-way voice. And this is all related to, to primarily SIP signaling and compatibility interop issues across the network. And these, are the th these, were the th these were basically the same three things two years ago and the same things today, and we still have to address them moving forward. And we need to implement real-time quality management systems that can help service providers identify problems and help to resolve them very quickly. In order to really make that happen, everyone in the food chain has to, number one, focus on the user experience and making that the primary focus of what we're trying to do. Um, we have to implement systems um, to monitor quality, you know, from, from the diagnostics in the evening and, and things like that, all the way down to real-time monitoring of what's going on in the networks and what's going on in the endpoints, and that can be done. Statistics can be collected. There are standards that are, have been in place now for several years uh, to, to collect those statistics and to send them out up into the network to network management systems that can, can log and help the, the service providers understand what the issues are in their, in their networks. Um, Real-time QoS monitoring, um, alerts and alarms, we ship in our voice engines today the capability to turn on statistics gathering uh, based on certain alerts. If, if uh, you know, packet loss becomes a certain point or if a, a MOS score hits a certain level where we automatically can start logging statistics and those can be reported via RTCP XR out to management and network systems to really help them understand what's going on from the head end of the network all the way down to the endpoint. And those are the kind of things that we really have to, to, um, to make happen as a total solution moving forward. Today, it's just in isolated cases, and it's not really a concerted effort. Um, this is an example of this, where PEQA is, is TI's part of the voice engine we do. Uh, and it can be embedded in, in the endpoints, in the phones, in the gateways, in the large gateways, in the infrastructure. Um, there's tool vendors that, that can log all of this information and, and uh, in network management systems and really make the, uh, uh, provide the tools and the data necessary to really troubleshoot what's going on in these networks so that the companies like ADP don't spend all this time fighting it. You know, the other salient comment that they made to me was, we've made a lot of progress over the year. We've worked and we've solved a lot of problems and we'll eventually be able to, you know, get our customer base all deployed, but all of the resources, I'm a small company, and all the resources I spent troubleshooting these systems, those people could have been off writing new applications and generating new revenue for me. And that's something that, that, that I don't like, right? So that was another, another point. Um, looking forward, 
at what new features are really coming that, that really I think will make an impact uh, in the VOIP space and give us uh, ammunition to really provide significant advantages over traditional systems. And to me, the biggest one is HD voice. HD voice is, is a really a true advanced audio capability that you cannot do on traditional systems. There's no question about that, and it is a true advantage. High density voice is, is over twice as capable as, as the, the traditional voice you see on the PSTN. People, I hear people call it, but calling it uh, S or CD quality sound, things like that. There's a couple of key things that it does. Um, it's very, you sample at a much higher rate, and it takes much more processing power in order to, to do wideband, high density voice. Uh, but that technology exists today, and it's in the phones that are shipping today. You can do wideband voice in these phones. Um, the key things that, that I see coming of this is it sounds better. You, you'll hear multiple people talking about it in conference calls and directly on calls. But the other things that it's, it's really going to enable once deployed is new applications, automated applications. Um, things like if you've ever used dra Dragon Natural Speaking or something like that and tried to train it, um, you, can't, you can't get error levels to an acceptable point using standard voice in the traditional P uh, PSTN. But wideband voice allows you to really do things like real-time language translation accurately. And um, those are the kind of things that are going to drive new applications in the future. Wideband voice, um, this is kind of just pictorially, pictorially showing you. SD voice is the traditional narrow band there in the white. Um, samples at about 8 kilohertz, and it provides a frequency of about 200 to 3.3. Now, the wideband voice sampling rates double 16 kilohertz, and if you've heard of things like super wideband or things like that, even sample at higher rates, you get a much larger frequency response. Um, the 200, basically the 200 to 3.3 is, is a smaller subset than what's in the human voice. The wideband allows the whole human voice to be captured. And on the low end side, from the 200 down to the 50, this is what really adds the intelligibility, the lifelikeness um, to, to the conversation. And then picking up the higher end frequencies really adds the ability to, for definition and, and discerning of what's going on. In addition to this, there's new features um, that are coming. Um, a lot of these are primarily being driven from the consumer space, the cell phone space. You've heard of uh, a lot of people now are talking about the iPhone effect. Um, Blackberries have GPS. Everyone's running around with, with new graphical user interfaces. Um, people are running games on cell phones and things like this. Some of these will make it into the IP phone space. Sorry about the noise here. But uh, some of these will make it into the IP phone space. But how many of these really get into the SMB space, I think, is yet to be determined. Um, it'll filter down slowly, but primarily, you know, these kind of whiz-bang things aren't, aren't number one, two, or three on my list of things that have to happen for SMB deployments of VoIP to be successful. Um, but they are coming. And... Um, it's going to be very exciting. Advanced user interfaces are starting to be deployed at, at the bottom level um, on silicon processors and in the base software that's out there. Um, advanced features like w uh, wireless LAN capability, Bluetooth, uh, USB ports are being offered on phones so you can plug in um, memory sticks and other types of USB applications. Um, things like uh, calendars, um, and personal productivity tools are also starting to migrate to the phones. Um, and a lot of this is really primarily driven by color screens. Um, a lot of the SMB phones today aren't in color. Most of the legacy phone systems don't use color displays. So um, to me, one of the key drivers is color displays coming into, into phones. You see that on some of the high end and some of the mid range on the enterprise. And as color starts coming into uh, the SMB space, that's when a lot more of these applications will start to happen. Uh, but today, you know, customers like ADP would be really happy if, if you could if you park a, a call, if you could do queuing. Uh, when you picked up the phone, it worked all the time. And that's really the kind of things that we have to focus on first, get our house in order, really 
put this infrastructure together to make this all happen. Um, so really, the call to action is, um, you know, from the lower levels of this food chain where we're providing the basic components that go into boards and, and basic phones that go into systems that go into VARs, which then go to the end customer, um, we really have to focus on, uh, on, on basically the 101 stuff, increasing and meeting the functionality of the legacy systems, improving our quality, uh, collaborating as an industry, solving interrupt and signaling problems, and then taking some of the, uh, the real key new features and capabilities that are coming into the VOIP space driven by software and advances in technology and putting them in and, and, and developing compelling stories around that. Um, because in the end, uh, I think we're all going to be unhappy if all we do is replace digital phones in this cyclical rate with SMBs, right? What we want is we want the hockey stick, not, not this nice slow ramp that lasts for 15 years. Bonuses aren't built on slow ramps. Bonuses are built on high ramps, and that's what we really want to see. And with that, thank you very much.